Okay, good. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for coming in again. Um, I'll do this right the first time. So for those of you who were here a uh, fortnight ago, I forgot to introduce myself. So for anyone who's new, my name is Austin. Um, I am kind of the education person, I guess, for our assembly. Um, unformally, it's not really a position uh, with us yet. It's not an elected officer's position, but um, you guys will probably be familiar with me mostly from standing up here on the stage and talking about some of our common law issues and the, um, and the education side of things. Tonight, we've got um, a little bit of a different uh, agenda ahead of us. Um, tonight, we're going to have our first session uh, with our constitutional studies coming tonight. And that's not going to be taught by myself. That's going to be taught by Bernie. Um, off to the side over here. But before I get into that, um, what I'd like to do is um, we're going to turn this over to Carlene, who's our convener. Carlene, um, if you guys, first of all, I guess, real quick, show of hands, who's new and has not been to one of these meetings before? Wow, well, again, almost half of us. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, it seems that every meeting we have, we have about half the group is new people coming in. So if this is your first time in, welcome, welcome. I'm going to turn you over to Carlene so she can officially kick off our meeting, get us open, and then we'll go through some announcements, some housekeeping, and then we'll move into our agenda uh, top topics and conversation. So go ahead, Carlene. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, as Austin said, my name is Carlene Haylock. And I'm your coordinator, your researcher, and your co convener So I really want to say thank you to all the organisers for tonight's meeting. And the standard that we've got um, so many new people here tonight. So please make yourself a little bit of a Okay, thank you. And I hope to see that you are not alone in this fight for justice. So just excuse me, I'm just going to read off some of my notes here um, for you. Common law has three easy principles for us to follow. That is to do no harm, do no lo have no loss or injury to any living man or woman. So please remember that. As we have politicians and our health officials not following that. And we're going to speak a little bit more about that as the night goes on. We are here as a community group and we cover lots of different areas, different walks of life, but we are here to make a better community. Not the one that we're living in in the moment with discrimination, segregation and coercion. For that, to be successful, we need to stop bickering about our differences we may have and find a common goal. We are here for the community, not for personalities. So, please leave your egos at the door. We are a new group and there is so much to learn and we have many volunteers that are raising their hands to educate us on the practicality of common law and our rights. You will hear tonight from some of those people and I'm sure that you will go away with a greater knowledge of what your unalienable rights are. I would like to fill you in on what I've been working on since our last meeting. I've been invited to assist with an international law case that encompasses Australia, New Zealand and the UK. This links into the International Common Law Courts case that is happening right now. I want to say to you that you have an opportunity to assist me by talking to your family members, friends, business people that have either suffered an injury or worse still, death from this experimental drug and ask them if they are willing to make a statement or an affidavit and file it with our police as a crime. We need to collect as many statements from people so we can have evidence presented to the police that they then have to investigate as a crime that has been committed. 
This will, in my opinion, have a bigger impact than the papers that have been served recently because we are using the current system that we find ourselves in and using it on the establishment. As they say, the pen is mightier than the sword and we're going to use it so that the pen will become the sword that can stab into the heart of this beast. I will have more on this later in the week. I have many meetings to attend to and we'll have a template coming out as soon as possible to help people fill out their statements. This is where I feel the Assembly can assist by supporting the people to the police stations and helping them stand in their truth. If we have thousands of statements, which is sad, but in reality it is a building the legal case that cannot be ignored and we can get justice for all. So, in saying that, I will finish here for the moment and would like to pass over to our executive members for their reports and I will come back and wrap up the meeting at the end. Austin, I'd like you to take it away and I'd love to see um, all those hands again of who were the new members, who are the new, new people today. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Please, at the end of the night, it is uh, really important to do that networking um, and I thank you for joining us today um, and you're going to enjoy the meeting. All right, Austin, do you want to take it away, mate? Now, there it is. All right, cool. We're working through the audio still, so clearly. Um, I'll stand, I'll stay away from the computer over there, but um, okay. So, um, a few things in that. Um, I guess one of the first things that uh, I picked up on with Carlene, and we spoke a little bit about this before, is that there's a lot of injuries that are going on with these vaccines out here, right? We all know it. Um, one of the things that um, we have tried not to only focus on the vaccines and the COVID situation here with our common law assembly, uh, because this is much bigger than just that, but um, with common law, that's, that is a, a major focal point right now. We all know that, right? Um, so Carlene is working with some people right now to get us a template so that we can make those statements, those legal statements, to have them submitted to the police um, for anyone who we do know who is, has suffered from any of the vaccine, um, the jabs, uh, whatever you want to call them, vaccines or jabs. We don't want that just to go um, unattended. You know, if someone suffers from something and then, well, we can't do much about it. So we're working on a method and um, a, a legal document that we can take in and turn it into an action, right? So that um, it doesn't just, they don't just, they're not just forgotten and just get left behind and as part of, you know, history. Those, those are the, how many millions of people who got hurt from this. So, <coughs> That's the first thing I wanted to bring up and reiterate because Carlene has mentioned that we're working on getting that um, document prepared for us kind of as a template for anyone who wants to use it in the future, okay? So stand by on that one. That one's coming out um, soon. Um, let's see. Let's go back. So I've got some general housekeeping and some um, uh, announcements to make here. And we'll get uh, started with that. So as far as um, the facility goes, the toilets are located out in the lobby just over here in the corner of the room. There is um, water, I'm not sure, do we have coffee out there too tonight, Brody? Yep, okay, so if anyone needs any coffee, you feel free to run out in the lobby and grab that there. Um, out in the, do we still have our donations bucket out in the lobby, is that where it is? Yep. Yes? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we run off of uh, donations here because we have to hire out the facility. Um, something that we um, put out there every meeting uh, we're requesting a five dollar donation just so that we can cover the cost of this and then anything extra goes into a little bit of the fundraising that we do. Um, some of the fundraising efforts that you guys will now see is that we've had a chance to print off some of these informational flyers. You'll see them out in the lobby now. So we didn't have that available in that last meeting, but it is now. Uh, we've gone to a local printer and we're able to get that information out. You'll see some of them start popping up around town. I know there's a gentleman that works down at the um, Rusty's Market who wants to have them at his uh, cafe um, in there so that he can pass them out to people. 
this on it has, um, so it tells you where you can find us, where you can get the information specifically from our assembly on there. Um, so we can go to commonlaw.earth. Um, that's one of the pages we recommend you go to so you can get information on common law. Um, there's a lot on there. There's videos. There's all kinds of info on there so you can educate yourself. Um, the next part also, though, is that um, one of our members, Emma, is, um, has created a, a web page. It's a, it's a hub um, for all different resources around. And it, Emma, I'm not sure where you are. Can you stick your hand in the air and just wave to us, Emma? She's out there? Okay, cool. So Emma has created the Autonomy Network, um, and you can find that at autonomynetwork.org. Um, it's a pretty simple website to understand. If you click on, you want to learn about common law, you click on common law, and then it goes into the far north Queensland part or the hub. Anyway, um, you can find information from us on her website on that one. So it will tell you about minutes that we've had from previous meetings, uh, upcoming meetings, the announcements of like tonight's meeting has been posted on there for a few days now. Um, and in addition to the common law stuff, uh, that, that website is really helpful with all kinds of community related things. So um, we definitely recommend you go there to get some of that information outside of common law as well. Um, now, <coughs> we have a Telegram page. And over the last week, there's been a massive amount of um, uh, misunderstanding, um, miscommunication, and confusion that's been generated with the Telegram pages. So I want, last meeting we had here, which was a fortnight ago, we set it up in the announcements like I'm doing tonight, and I'm gonna repeat that, um, because this is important. There's been some actions in the community over this last week that have generated a lot of conversation. Who knows about the documents that were created and that were being served at different police stations? Yeah? Okay, good. We fielded an insane amount of inquiries about that. Um, and we, no matter how many times we were telling people, um, it seems that people from our assembly and also from outside of our assembly were just getting confused, massive confusion about, it was said on the Telegram page. So I need to reiterate this. If you guys are on Telegram and you're on that page, on any of the pages, there are two Telegram pages here in Kings, all right? Two of them. One of them is ours. The other one is not. And they're not affiliated with us. And and they made it very clear that they don't want us posting our information on their site, on their page, which is fine. Um, they are not an assembly, so the one that we have is called the Cairns Common Law Assembly. So I want to make that very clear tonight. It's not Common Law Cairns. That is not us. Now I know that a lot of us in here are on both of those pages. And so when information starts getting shared, I want you to know which information is coming from us and which is not. So this is important. So write it down if you need to, if you're on Telegram. It's the Cairns Common Law Assembly. That's us. Okay? And I guess this is the, um, I'll get to the heart of that um, right now. I'll just address it. So the, <coughs> over the past uh, week and a half, I believe, there's been some documents that were published by the Velvet Revolution. Some of you guys may know who they are. Um, and there was, uh, those documents came out of the inter uh, Common Law International Courts. And then the Velvet Revolution um, put their, they actually put the documents together and they published them online. And we had a lot of people who were saying, holy smokes, look at this, did you guys know this was out? And yet some of us found out about it right away. There was no formal announcement, it was just out there. And then we had people download those documents. It's a packet of documents that are about an inch and a half thick, about that big. There's a lot of them. Um, and immediately when we saw those come out, some of our leadership team here that puts these meetings together for you guys had some conversations with each other saying, did you see this? Said, no, have you seen it? And we started looking through it. One of the things that we wanted to do as an assembly was be very, very clear about what was in those documents and before we print them off and go walk up to the police and hand them to these documents and say, you need to action this. We're serving you these papers and um, go, go start an investigation now. We wanted to look through them, see what's in them. 
Because a lot of what was happening out there was that there would be people that said, holy smokes, this came from the common law international courts. And it must be perfect, man. It's going to be the silver bullet. Let's go serve it to all these police departments. But people were printing off and there was, they were, some of the problems that we found. Now I don't, let me back up a bit. I don't want to talk down about the Velvet Revolution, okay? Because they're on our side with all of this common law stuff that's going on, right? But the packet of information that came out had a lot of errors in it. A lot. Um, some of the dates that were on there, um, I think one of the dates on there was 1022 instead of 2022. So if you went with that year, that precedes the Magna Carta. <laughs> if you remember our studies on the Magna Carta, right? 1215. So 10, you know, uh, 1022 precedes the Magna Carta. That date's incorrect completely. But we also found that there were some other critical mistakes in it. So, um, Brody, can you pop up that um, that next one that's now, I don't know if you guys can see this. Can we zoom in on that at all? <coughs> I don't know if you can. The number six document down there. Oh, lost it. Number six document down there. Um, 06 VR, pubic warrant to seize the COVID vaccine final. <laughs> Uh, it's funny when you look at it, but, but it's not so funny when that's a legal document that you're trying to serve to someone. Right? Does that make sense? Um, one of the other things that was wrong with some of the documents we saw was that instead of saying, and if you're listing it, uh, Jeanette Young as one of the defendants, uh, it listed Janelle Young. So there were, some, there were some serious spelling mistakes and some um, date errors and things like that that we found. Just at a, a cursory glance when we looked through this paperwork and said, whoa. This needs to be re-looked at, guys. So us together as kind of a leadership group, we all got together, had a Zoom meeting with Carly, um, and then we decided as an assembly we were not going to serve those papers. Okay? There are people in our assembly who did serve some of those papers, and there's different versions of that packet of paperwork as well. Okay? So um, although we've come to find out, you know, that some, you know, misspellings are sometimes, they're fairly common in court documents and legal documents when they're published and, and they go through the courts. Um, we as an assembly decided not to, however, there are people in our assembly who did take part in serving some of those different documents to different places. And I guess the last part that made us um, decide not to was that um, by the time we had gotten switched on to it, um, those documents had already been served down at town hall first. So, and it was online, it was successful, it was very well done. Um, the the Townsville Common Law people that are down there, I'm not sure if it's their assembly or not, um, they made a, a good presentation to the police about it. They talked them through a little bit and then um, they requested the case number. Now, so those documents originally, though, before the Queensland Townsville serving of it, were served down in New South Wales. And so they, the New South Wales Police Department got hold of it and they assigned a case number to it. And so that was, that was really good. Um, that was widely published online. People were seeing that and saying, all right, finally, we got some recognition here in Australia. And that was really good. Then, of course, the Townsville one came along because we wanted to have it into the Queensland police system as well with a separate document number, right? A separate case number assigned to it. Once that went through Townsville, into the Queensland police system. They should have, have, they should have a, um, a police case number assigned to it. That's not gonna get redone every single time we walk into the Kansas Police Department or the Mariba one or the Mossman one or, that's not gonna get a new case number assigned to it every time. So the purpose, I guess, of walking in and having a chat with those police departments like, uh, We'll have, a, we'll have a little bit longer talk about this because Bernie was part of one of those. So he'll get to discuss that with us at the end of tonight's meeting. That's an agenda item for us to talk it through. Um, but the purpose of that is to go up and spread the word with all of the different stations, the police stations, and say, look, this has come through. We know that it's been served down at Townsville and it should be in your system already. Can you guys also have a look? Because we're asking for you to help part, take part in the investigation and or the arrests that we feel are relevant to this case. So by taking it into Mossman, that station now is aware of it. Taking it into the Kansas station, they would then be aware of it as well. So we're basically just spreading the word at that point. 
we're not going to get a new case number for each one. And that was, I guess that was the, the final deal breaker, not really a deal breaker, but the decision maker for us to say, okay, they've gone out enough, there's a lot of them out there. Um, if anyone wants to still go up and do that with some documents that may or may not have errors in it, okay, let them do that, but we're not going to go ahead as an assembly do that. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's part of what we did not want to have happen. So you have to understand, I guess, with a mistake like that, we want to be taken seriously. Right, we're here to study common law and learn about it. We don't want to look foolish by walking in with documents that say we have a pubic arrest warrant. <laughs> it just, although I know it's a con, it's a mistake, all right? Everyone makes mistakes. It's a spelling mistake, but it does make you look kind of foolish when you walk in. And, and if, I guess, to follow on to that, one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later with Bernie is that um, we want to have the police on our side when we're talking to them, right? A lot of the police, what we've come to find out is that they don't know about the Constitution because they're just like us. They weren't taught. Right? So they're kind of in the same shoes that we are before we started studying this. Right? And they just put on a different uniform, a different shirt, and they go to work and they have to be. And so Bernie and I and, and uh, Errol and Carleen, and we've all discussed some of the options, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, about where we want to go with it, but we definitely want to be taken seriously when we walk in and we present this big packet of legal documents to these guys. Okay? And so that was why we made the decision as an assembly not to go ahead with those services of the papers. There were already plenty of people doing it, and there was a lot of errors and mistakes, and so we just we, we hold back. Okay? Are there any Serious concerns about us, about that, about our assembly not doing the service. You can you can raise your concerns if that's the case. That's fine. That's go ahead. Yeah, that's a good question. So. Do, what I can tell you is that those documents were reviewed. Um, I got on to Velvet Revolution's Telegram page myself because I was a member of that. Um, had a little go at them. Um, I put on there, you know, I really want to get behind this, but these documents are riddled with errors. You know, Janelle Young um, and the dates and the pubic um, arrest warrants. I, I put it all on there and I said, you know, that I can't. We don't feel right sending people out to police stations serving this stuff, you know. And they banned me after five minutes. That comment being on there, they banned me, which is fine. I'm not really that offended by it. I kind of deserved it, and I was asking for it because I wasn't nice with my comment. But <clears throat> right after that, the next day, the documents were revised. So they did. They took it on board. They made some changes. They and I also know that there is um, another person here uh, that might even be in attendance tonight. Them and um, and their partner, who have a strong legal background, have gone through those documents as well and revised some. And then when those revised ones were then served to, at Mossman, so that, that's a positive. I have, we have to take the wins where we can. Yeah. But the Mariba document last Tuesday was burning, helping serve that, yeah. So we'll, we'll get a chance to talk about that towards the end of the meeting tonight after we do the Constitution section. Um, we'll talk about, we've got a section tonight on the agenda dedicated to uh, actions in the community and, and our interactions with police and courts and things like that, yeah. So we will get a chance to cover that, yeah. I'll show you now. What I'm concerned about is the vaccine seizures. Yep. Okay. That's a good question. So, um, I'll hit that right now before I carry on with the rest of these. Okay. So the question is, um, with these vaccine centers, how far off are we with being able to go in and shut them down? Yeah. I want to use this service of papers as an example. Okay. And this is, I guess, the, the heart of where we're at right now. Where? <coughs> how many of you have been to many of these meetings? And have you learned uh, a fair bit or not? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. 
Picture if you can, after the first meeting you attended, and you have a little bit of knowledge in your head now, and then you got this download of documents, this package of documents, and you're ready, you're full of moto, and you're ready to go out and serve them in the police department. Bang. Possibly, you probably would have embarrassed yourself if you had done that, right? And part of the problem that I had with um, endorsing that package was that um, we have a lot of people who are still learning the basics of this, right? There's a lot of people in this room who still don't know about Magna Carta and about Bill of Rights and about our original constitution and how it was changed and that we're acting under a corporate government, okay? So as an assembly and as a community, we're still on that learning curve. We're still at kind of the beginning part of it, right? Now there's some of us in here. I've spoken to a gentleman tonight. Uh, where is he? He's back there. Back in the room, stick your hand up. Who's pretty far advanced and is learning with common law. Very far advanced. So I'm going to talk to him a little bit later about maybe getting up here and teaching us a little bit, right, in one of our sessions. Just like we learned with Bernie, he's going to get up and teach us about Constitution. So to answer your question about the back centers, we haven't, we're not at a point yet where we're going to walk in, cease and desist, and understand the backing that we have with that, with the, the legal backing, sorry, that we have with a notice like that, okay? So if I was to walk into, um, I don't know, we, how do I know that those cease and desist orders are actually valid or that they have any kind of backing to them other than me just uh, printing them off at home on a computer and walking in and saying you have to? So, so we have to have the education behind us in order to stand firm behind those legal documents and the process that we're going through with that, okay? And that's where we're at as an assembly right now. So, to an answer your question is, um, some of us in our assembly right now probably have that understanding, that knowledge, that background to be able to walk into one of these vax clinics and say, you must, bang, here's your cease and desist. Are there any assemblies in Australia that Are there assemblies in Australia who've got that ability? Yeah, yeah, there are. There are people who've been studying common law for decades. So are we going to see any of that? Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, we're getting there. We're going to start seeing that. So um, that's the short, but a little bit long-winded answer for you. Okay. Okay. So let me carry on with our housekeeping, our announcements. Um, I just want to make that clear, though, that the uh, <coughs> Telegram page cans. Common Law Assembly is us. The other one is not. Yeah, and that's the one that's private by invite. And the way you get invited to that is if you contact us via email. Write this email down, please. So admin dot cans c l a at protonmail dot com. I'll repeat that for you, okay? Admin dot cans c l a at protonmail dot com. Send an email off to that. Then we know you are part of our assembly because you, you got that from us here tonight. That goes off to our admin person, and they can add you to the Telegram page. Otherwise, um, to get basic information about agendas and about minutes and things like that, we're going to go to Emma's uh, autonomy network.org. Okay? Alright, so I hope I cleared that up. Um, let's move on. Right, I do have an announcement that's coming up. Um, uh, a few, about a little over a month ago, we had uh, Senator Len Harris, who was here as one of our keynote speakers. Is anyone here during that time when Len was here? Yeah. Okay. And he mentioned about the um, the property, the the act that we were pushing through to try and abolish titles, land titles. Um, and Len has taken a case to the Supreme Court, and that's going to be heard here coming up on February 18th. And he has requested, and he will be back here next in a fortnight as well. Uh, but uh, he has requested our help with that in a massive showing at the Kansas Supreme Court. Mark that on the calendar. That's going to be February, Friday, February 18th at the Kansas Supreme Courthouse. Be there at 9.30 for a 10 a.m. start. 
Okay. So that will be three days after our next meeting. Yep, okay, cool. That's going to be an important one for us to be at, to show support, okay? Um, sorry? Yeah, 9.30. Be there at 9.30 for a 10 a.m. start. Yeah. Sorry? No, just turn up. That's what he's asking for. Turn up. Massive support in numbers. Okay. I think that's listed on MS Autonomy Network on FNQ. Um, it is on there, yeah. I haven't seen that we have to register for it. Did he say that? Did he? Okay. I'll find out. I'll get a look at him over the next couple of days and we'll, um, we'll post it on that for you. Oh, okay. That's right. So that he can present that to the, to the courts and say, okay, that's right, that's right. Um, I don't remember where we're supposed to register that at, though. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll put that on um, the Autonomy Network, and we'll also put it on the Telegram page. So where we can register our emails at for, to, for him to take that into the court and show this is how many people we've got supporting him. Yep. Yep. Yep, so, so some of the some of the people got into the course last. We'll cover that one in a second too. Um, at the end of our meeting with Kelvin. Um, okay. So yeah, he's um, he's asked about at nine o'clock ish. Look, the, the hearing is supposed to start at ten. Um, because of all the trouble with COVID and people wearing masks and not being allowed in and being allowed in and all that stuff. Look, if you can get in there about between nine and nine thirty, maybe a little bit earlier than not, you know the 9.30 mark, then that'll help get people processed into the court. So, um, Now, we'll go over um, Bernie's efforts in Mariba um, at the end of the meeting, so I'll give you that. We'll, we'll sit down, that'll be transitioning into the Q&A section at the end. And then um, fundraising. So the last thing I have for you guys is that we do have um, more of our flags that have, been, that have come in. So this is one of our fundraisers as well. It's the Federation flag over there, the old red duster. Um, if you're not familiar with it, that is the original flag that was submitted to the Commonwealth to the Crown when we petitioned her to become a federated nation. So they, um, no. Yeah, that is correct, yeah. No, 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 the Queen didn't present that back to us. It was back, back when we, before the Constitution was actually enacted in 1900, okay? They, um, the, I guess it was the Australians who were living here before it was called Australia, if you will call it that, petitioned the Crown to become a federated nation. They said, yes, get us a Constitution and get us a flag. This is the flag that they had suggested, okay? Now that was modified by the Crown later to say, now we want it to be a little bit different, we want it to be longer, a longer ensign, and we were gonna change the points on the stars. So this is the original flag that was submitted, although it was never officially accepted uh, because they wanted to make their own modifications to make it a maritime flag, a longer ensign. This is the flag, however, that our diggers marched under when they were at war. Okay, so that's why you will see that flag at rallies out in town, and that's why we've chosen to stick with um, that flag as a fundraiser for us, okay? They're $30 each. Um, full disclosure, that we're making, I think it's like $11 or something like that off of each sale, so that we can then generate funds to pay for things like this. And we're looking for some marquees to come by and things like that, so that we can go out and speak to people in the public as well. The other thing is, um, is it Mick? Mick. Where are you, Mick? Thanks, Mick. Um, Mick has uh, got these t-shirts that are designed. Um, he has donated five of them, five of them to us again. Um, so he did that last four night. Um, another fundraiser, um, $30 again. Uh, but yeah, so it's pure white. 
says across the front of it, pure blood, unmasked, unvaxxed, and unafraid. Of course, with the line on it. And then there's your own unique QR code on the back. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you for your generous donation. We have got, we've donated five of those to us for fundraisers, so we'll, again, $30 each. We'll match up the size that you need if you want them. And then he's also got his own additional ones that he's selling for his own fundraiser as well, okay? So if you guys are interested, uh, there's more than just five of them. All right. I think that brings us up to, um, up to speed with all of our announcements. Uh, yes. So... Oh. Ah, yeah, for Sipinius, thank you for that. Okay, um, the, so when we first got started with this assembly, um, we looked into the commonlaw.earth website, and um, we started forming our assembly based on the principles that are in that, um, having more than nine people present to make it in order to swear an oath into our assembly, um, and then we elected a convener, which is Carly, and then um, we started looking at other options that are on there about um, registering your birth on that website. Okay. Since then, um, some of, several of us have done that, registered your birth, then declaring yourself as um, I'm a sovereign individual. Um, we had a meeting last week about sovereignty, um, and we'll repeat that later on after we do some of the constitution sessions. Okay. But. Um, I want you guys to not, to, to at this point, stop registering any of your births on that website. And the questions that we have raised is, um, where does that information go and who has access to it and how secure is it when we put our information onto there, okay? So until we can get those questions answered, um, we're just, we're not advocating that anybody continue throwing all of their family information and their birth and all that stuff into that website, okay? That website, we currently still use it for a lot of informational, uh, common law informational um, videos. Um, there's descriptions of like sheriffs and their duties and things like that. That's going to be a position where our common law assembly will navigate towards. We'll get there when, and that's kind of what you're seeing is like in Canada and in the UK and different places right now where they're a lot, bit farther along and more advanced of an assembly than we are um, right now at this point. We don't. Have, we're not that far along where we've elected sheriffs and said, "Hey, we're, we've got a court set up here as well." So, um, at the time being, for the time being, we're using it as informational. But I'm not telling anyone now to register your birth on that website. Okay? Does that? Is that? Was anyone else concerned about that? No. Okay. Cool. Well, then at least it's out there and we're cleared on it. Okay. Now, got a gentleman here, um, Bernie. Bernie, what's your last name? I forget. Bernie Drew. That's it. <laughs> Bernie is um, a local constitutionalist. Now, Bernie has spent... All right. He claims he's not an expert. Bernie is... Um, can I tell him? Commonwealth public officer. Um, how many years did you serve? 1968. I swore my allegiance to the second. Okay, hang on. Let me just do this. I'm going to turn it over to Bernie, he, and I'm going to step <laughs> off the stage, and I'm going to learn and listen tonight to you, okay? So, without further ado, this is Bernie. He's going to talk to us tonight about the Constitution. Okay. People are known as a, a CPO, Commonwealth Public Official. In 1968, in Melbourne, I swore an allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of Great Britain, Northern Ireland. She is the head of the Commonwealth and she is the keeper of the faith. Her heirs and successors, and that is the true oath. Also part of my oath was to serve and protect the sovereign people of this country as a member of the Royal Australian Navy. Not the so-called Australian Navy we have today. It is called the Royal Australian Navy then. Okay, they changed it over in about 1988 to the ADF. So just so that you understand it. So I started to go through the Constitution a little. I've studied it. I'm not uh, an expert, 
but I know a fair bit of the Constitution. Now, I was one of the people that were involved in the serving of the papers at Mariba last week, and I can tell you too that we served it before council. So, we never got a number because, yes, as Austin said, there were some mistakes in those papers. Unfortunately, we didn't pick it up until afterwards that there was mistakes. I was going to go back on Monday to speak to them, but unfortunately, the big movement in the major cities happened on Monday for the arrest of the governors, the Governor General, and all the premiers. There's a big stage there in uh, Canberra today where they had the truckies start to arrive there and a lot of people there in Canberra today and they tried to arrest ScoMo, but I think he's hiding with Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's just a little part of it at the start. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. One of the questions I said to the senior sergeant at Mariba the other day was, do you know your constitution? And he said, Bernie, honestly, I, don't, I couldn't even recite it to you. I thought to myself, hmm, okay. I said to him, probably 90 to 95% of the police don't know their constitution. And yet they're the law enforcers. The law enforcers don't even know the highest law in this country is the Constitution. It is the highest. There's nothing higher. It's the one that rules us. This is the one that rules them because it's we, the people, who are the government. We are the people that tell them what to do. They don't tell us what to do. I think there's two constitutions. Now, hang on. Before we go, can I go on further? Please hold your questions and let me finish the thing. No, that's all right, you're all right, because um, you are right too, there is, okay? There's a, there's a false one, but there's only one true one. Thank you. The false one's not even recognised, but they recognise. Anyhow, please hold your questions until after the presentation, and we'll have a bit of a talk with everybody, but we need to get through it because, don't forget, this is not only constitutional, but we here are here for common law. Even though we don't have any common law in this country because it's been stolen by the Admiralty Maritime Law, which is a corporation-led law. Okay? So let me start with my constitution. If those who have got a copy, you can follow it as I go down and I'll let you know. In 1902, was the start of destroying <coughs> this country. 1902. Approximately 16 months after Queen Victoria passed our legislation, that uh, passed our act to become a consolidated federation in an indissolvable constitution. Now, it started with New South Wales and ended with Victoria in 1975. Our constitution was stolen. So, as I go through, I will be going through this. I'll just go through the first part of this constitution. I'll let you know. You may follow it if you like in there. As I said, please hold the questions until the end of the presentation and then that way we can get through and get a few more things done. And I'm more than welcome to talk to anybody if they want to know anything when we go outside. Okay, the Commonwealth of Australian Constitution Act 63 and 64, that means 63 years to 64 years of Queen Victoria. Okay, that's when it was. It's Chapter 12 of the Act. An act to constitute the Commonwealth of Australia. And it was done on the 9th of July, 1900, when it was enacted. And they had, here in Australia, approximately six months to have it 
fully enacted in Australia and it happened on the 1st of January 1901. That's the first time and the first day of it. Whereas the people of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Queensland, Tasmania, humbly relying on the blessing of Almighty God have agreed to unite in one indissoluble, indissoluble means they can't remove no one Not any one bloody lawyer or whatever wants to turn around and try and tell you it doesn't exist. They are full of it. It is still there in a bottom drawer in Canberra. They can't dissolve it. They can't remove it because it is we, the people, that put it there. And they haven't asked us, we the people, to remove the constitution of this country. So, indissoluble, and, as I just stated to you, by the blessing of Almighty God, we have a structure of our constitution, we have a crown, which is God. It sits on the head of a royal. It is not the royal, it is what sits on that royal's head. There's the crown. Between the crown and God, uh, between the royal and, the, and, and God is the crown. So he is the crown. God. And what are they doing in our parliaments today? Removing God from everything. Stopping you from going to your churches, whichever church you belong to, they're stopping you from going to it and they're trying to eradicate it. Why? Because they're afraid of it. They're all satanic Luciferians. All right. And whereas, oh, but the uh, indissoluble federal commonwealth under the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and under the constitution hereby established, and whereas it is expedient for the admission into the commonwealth of other Australasian colonies and possessions of the Queen. And that allowed Western Australia to come into the Constitution at the beginning when they were the last ones to decide, their people decided to join them. And they joined them in June of 1900 before the proclamation of this Constitution. Okay. Be it therefore enacted by the Queen's most excellent majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Lord Spiritual and Temporal and Commons, in this present Parliament assembled by the authority of the same as follows. One, this Act may be cited as the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act. That's the short title. There is a longer title to it, that goes more into the depths of the book which explains the reasons for some of these acts. But what I want to do is make sure that everybody gets to understand the 128 sections of the Constitution. I think I've gone up to about number 10. So we've got a few more to go. So please, hold on to your documents. I don't care if you take them and photocopy them and give them to friends who haven't got any, that's fine because I would love to see a lot more people understand what your constitution and your legal rights are. And our laws is common law under this constitution, not admiralty and maritime law. Okay? All right. Two, the provisions of this act referring to the Queen's shell extend to Her Majesty's heirs and successors in the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. So this is an act extended to the Queen's successors. So if she dies, which she hasn't as yet, well we all think she hasn't yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> that's got to come out a little bit later. <laughs> Uh, so it, it extends to heirs and successors and I don't know whether there's any of them left either. <coughs> uh, number three. It shall be lawful for the Queen with the advice of the Privy Council to declare by proclamation that 
on and after a day therein appointed, not being later than one year after the passing of this act. I've said six months, so I'm sorry. I told you I wasn't an expert. So 12 months passing of this act. The people of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Queensland, Tasmania and Western Australia if Her Majesty is satisfied that the people of Western Australia have agreed to, they have, and shall be united in a federal commonwealth under the name of the Commonwealth of Australia. But the Queen may, at any time after the proclamation, appoint a Governor General for the Commonwealth. The Queen may appoint a Governor General. Not a so-called Prime Minister who is only really the President of the Senate. No such thing in this Constitution does a state a Prime Minister. It does state a President of the Executive Council. Okay? So, no Prime Minister can appoint the Governor General, but they are doing it. Have been since 1960. The last approved and appointed Governor General by the Queen was in, and the Privy Council was in 1960. Okay, so every Governor General since then have been in cruising. Every one of them. Alright, so that's, um, that's the proclamation of the Commonwealth. For the Commonwealth shall be established and the constitution of the Commonwealth shall take effect on and after the day so appointed. But the parliaments of the several colonies... Now remembering people, before the constitution was enacted and proclaimed and accepted by the people of Australia, at the time they weren't known as Australia or whatever they were, but they were colonies. They were all separate little colonies. And any lawyer tells you that they what particularly here in Queensland tells you that the 1867 constitution of this state overrules the federal government is absolutely wrong. They haven't got a clue what they're doing. And that's a fact. There's no such thing as their constitution overrides this constitution. As you will find as we go on, you will understand. But they were known as colonies then. Alright? So just be sure that they are now, they are colonies before this was enacted. Um, Alright, let's go back to there. Um, colonies may be at any time after passing of this Act make any such laws to come into operation on the day so appointed as they might have made if the Constitution had taken effect at the passing of this Act. Now what that's stating is, this is the commencement of the Act. Every colony had a right to put their own Constitution in place. Right? And they did put in their Constitution in place to this Constitution. And all these so-called criminals that are running around now telling you there's no constitution and things like that. These constitution on the inception of the Federation was patented by Queen Victoria because she knew what the politicians were going to be about. He knew that they were going to try and change this constitution. So she was pretty smart by patenting every state's constitution. Alright? But they've hidden all those patents. You can't find them. That's what they've done. Who's here? Who hid them? Yeah. What are they called today? Political parties, aren't they called that? Yeah. Labour? Like Liberal? Okay. That's who's done it. They've all done it. Every one of them have been involved in it. It all started in 1902, as I said, it changed. So, that's what happened. Alright? Um, so, 
This act, number five, this act and all laws made by the Parliament of the Commonwealth under the Const- Constitution shall be binding on the courts, judges and people of every state. Binding on the courts of the people and and judges of this of these states. Binding. Uh-huh. And every part of the Commonwealth, notwithstanding anything in the laws of any state and laws of the Commonwealth shall be enforced on all British ships, the Queen's ships of war, except whose first port of clearance and whose port of destination are in the Commonwealth. So that's the operation of the Constitution and the laws. That's exactly how they've been supposed to be. All people, all courts, all judges must abide by this Constitution. Not some state's Constitution. This federal Constitution. Okay. Number six, the Commonwealth. Shall mean the Commonwealth of Australia as established under this Act. That's what it is now. We are the Commonwealth of Australia. And we start off the Commonwealth of Australia with a capital C, then we go to lower casing and so forth. Not the Commonwealth of Australia that is established under this system at the moment called a corporation and it's all in capital letters. The Commonwealth of Australia is also in this capital letters, Commonwealth of Australia, is registered on the American securities, traded in the New York, on the New York Stock Exchange and owned by the UN. The UN which is a 68% Marxist federation. Unelected people who want to be a new world, new world order. Okay? So that's what our Commonwealth of Australia in capital letters represents. An Admiralty and maritime law and held by the UN. Ah. So the states shall mean such as those colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand. It had New Zealand in our constitution originally. I cannot find anywhere where New Zealand broke away from Australia. That's right. So, right. Eh? That's right. But, there isn't any. No, I, I, I've never been able to find it, so I could never understand it. Yet it's here in our constitution that New Zealand is a colony to, a, to, to the Commonwealth of Australia. Yeah. So, so it's unreal. Anyhow, that's another story, I suppose, for a long time. But anyhow, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia, including the Northern Territory of South Australia. So the Northern Territory is part of South Australia, although it is only a territory. They can claim it and take it back up and bring it under our constitution, but they haven't. They left it as a territory. The same as when they opened up Canberra. The idea of opening up Canberra was to stop the bickering between Victoria and New South Wales, the so-called the superpowers of Australia, or the Commonwealth of Australia. Okay? So that was the reason why they opened up the territory and called it Canberra. Which, mind you, is owned by the the elitists. Righto. So, and each of such parts of the Commonwealth shall be called a state. So that's what we're talking about, the states, right? And that's the definitions of it. The original state shall mean such states as part of the Commonwealth as its establishment. So that's every... That's why you've got six points on the red, on the star there. The six points represents the six states that are part of our constitution. That's what it is. Okay. 
Alright, so number seven, the Federal Council of Australasia Act 1885 is hereby repealed. So that was the council, that was what they were under at the time under there as a common. They were following that act. And it was repealed. But so as not to affect any laws passed by the Federal Council of Australasia and in force at the establishment of the Commonwealth. So any such law may be repealed as to any state by the Parliament of the Commonwealth, as to any colony not being a state by the Parliament thereof. So they have repealed all the old, old laws that overrode what this constitution stands for. And that's what the whole idea of it was, was to make sure that they all came in under line and it must be under this constitution. They can't be above it. That's why they form a federation. All right. Um, uh, and the repeal of Federal Council Act 48 and 49 of Victoria, which is in her in her Act, uh, which would be Chapter 60 of that, that Act of hers. All right. Now I've got that written down there for you if anybody wants to look at it. After passing of this Act, the colonial boundaries. This will be interesting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> After the passing of this Act, the Colonial Boundaries Act 1895 shall not apply to any colony which becomes a state of the Commonwealth, but the Commonwealth shall be taken to be a self-governing colony for the purpose of this Act. We do not have any boundaries on any state. You are free to move around in this country because we are one colony. This is the rubbish they've been talking to you about and brainwashing everybody about. There is no such thing as any boundaries to any state. They were repealed on the formation of this constitution. So they're all for themselves. You can see the treason that has been committed by these people. And it's been going on since 1902. It's only since 1973 that it really started to come in to force under the communist called Gough Whitlam, who handed our country over to the UN, surrendered it without firing one shot. He handed it to them and did not tell you the people. <coughs> That's what he did. Right up. After passing this act, oh, come back. Right, so that's the thing about the boundaries. The constitution of, Com of the Commonwealth shall be as follows. The constitution is divided as follows. Chapter 1, the Parliament. Part 1, General. Part 3, uh, 2, the Senate. Part 3, the House of Representatives. Part 4, both houses of the Parliament. And part 5, the powers of the Parliament. Chapter 11, the Executive Government. I'm oh, sorry, I take that back. Chapter 2. <laughs> sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right. Chapter 2, the Executive Government. Chapter 3 is the Judicature. And chapter 4, Finance and Trade. Chapter 5, The States. Chapter 6, The New States, although we haven't had any. Chapter 7, Miscellaneous. And chapter, three, uh, chapter 8, Alterations of the Constitution. And that's what we'll be going through. So, Chapter 1, The Parliament. Part 1, General. 1, The Legislature. The legislative power of the Commonwealth shall be vested in a federal parliament. Not a federal government, but a federal parliament. That's all they are. They're a parliament. 
these people are elected by the people, they go into the parliament with limited powers. They only have the power what this allows them and what we allow them. That's what this constitution is about. So, so the House, and so it'll be called the Parliament or the Parliament of the Commonwealth. A Governor General appointed by the Queen shall be Her Majesty's representative in the Commonwealth and shall have and may exercise in the Commonwealth during the Queen's pleasure, but such to this constitution, such powers and functions of the Queen as Her Majesty may be pleased to assign to him. Alright now, and remember and I said it's the Queen who appoints the Governor General, right? because he's her representative. Right? Our representative, us the people, is really the Senate. Because they're the people that are there to tell us whether the, the House of Representatives put into a legislation is correct. They're there to keep the checks and balances, but they don't. What they've done now, today, is they all work together so they can line their own pockets, take everything that they can possibly steal from you, the people, think up more ways of getting more money off you and everything else so that they're sitting pretty and you are destitute. And then you have to rely on them for a life. Remember the New World Order slogan? You will own nothing and be happy. Remember that, you'll be happy. That's what you'll be. And you'll own nothing. Yeah. Just go and ask them if I can have a barbecue next week and I'll deliver you the barbecue and a little bit of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that's the only way you're going to have a robot that will deliver it. Um, so, that's why the Governor General was appointed by the Queen. Now he's appointed by the Prime Minister of the country and all he is, is a treasonous traitor that's sitting there and only a stamp pusher. He stamps documents and that's all he does. He's a figurehead. He's a nobody. They've all got to change. We've got to get rid of them all. But anyhow, just so that you all understand what's going on behind the scenes, what they're doing to us, and this is what will tell you what they're doing, so that you will understand it all. Because it's very important for the future of our... Me, I look at it this way. I'm only 74 years old. I've probably got about maybe 10 years left. But my grandkids are just growing up. And I want to leave a place for my grandkids. I do not want them to live under this. So that's why it's my battle. And that's why I'd like to see you all learn the Constitution so that you can all have a word to your children and uh, see if you can get the message out to them and so they can understand what is happening and what their rights really are. Because they do not need to be standing under a Daniel Andrews, a Scott Morrison, a Paul Chop, I mean, a uh, Palaszczuk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should be, should be respectful, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the Governor General, number three. There shall be payable to the Queen out of the consolidated, <coughs> consolidated revenue fund of the Commonwealth for the salary of the Governor General an annual sum until the Parliament otherwise provides shall be ten thousand pounds. We haven't had a referendum to change his pay yet. <laughs> and our real money in this country is pounds and pence, not dollars. 
dollars were introduced under this fiat money session so they can take everything off you because all of this is a piece of paper worthless. Doesn't matter. It is not worth a penny. It's the same as if you want to get into Bitcoin. It's, it's alright if you even want to get into this Bitcoin stuff. It's not backed by anything. Our pound and shillings of pence was backed by gold, silver and precious metals. That's what it was. They stole it. They stole $3 trillion of gold out of our treasury. Little Johnny Howard took it over and gave it to good old George Bush and they stuck it down in the dungeons of the CIA building. That's what money will say have been. They've stolen everything. It's our money. What are all these so-called miners and things like that? Mining. Taking gold out. Taking whatever they like out of the ground. Sending it overseas. Who gives them the right to take that gold and give it away? We did. None of us did. They get paid to take, them, take it out of the ground. But they don't own the gold. We own the gold. We are the Commonwealth. Not them. We are Telstra. What gives them the right to sell Telstra? We didn't tell them they could sell it. Have a look at everything else that they've sold. Your railways, your ports, your air, 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 air airports. Everything. We own it, not them. They don't own nothing. They are legislators in a parliament. That's all they are. But they've stolen the bloody lot. They even steal our water now and sell it overseas. Our gas. They've done it without petroleum for years. So, they need to be gone. Really, strictly speaking, but you have to do it correctly. This is where we've got to go. Our highest law in the land. It tells them they cannot override what's in here. They cannot override us, the people. We have the power. Nobody else. Alright? It's in your hands. That's why we have to be united, everybody. And stand together and do it peacefully but lawfully and remove them. You, even if we have to use your own system. I don't know how many of you know, but I was the one that served the papers at Mariba Service <coughs> Police Station the other day. Alright? And I did it and I never got a number because I did find out I had the right papers but we didn't have the right papers if you know what I mean. So the papers were off, we took over and I had Robert here who assisted me. And we stood there but you know what came out of it? Better remember one thing, we've got no common war in this country. There's no court for common law. Okay? We're trying to get a court for common law. Somebody said there was one in New South Wales. I don't know whether it's true or not. I can't say for sure, but as far as what I can find out, there's none. It's all, and every judge, lawyer, magistrate, Barrister, whatever you want. In this country they are all standing in prison because they swore their allegiance to the Queen of Australia. Well, I never knew that Molly Mulder was made of the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only Queen that I know of and I didn't think it was a Queen. I thought it was only good old Molly. So, People, this is where the treason, that's how high our treason is. You've got to look at it. The Queen of Australia can't have any heirs and successors because she's only a bloody signature on a bloody piece of paper as a Queen. So she can't have any heirs and successors. So what happens if Queen Elizabeth II dies? Hey? Do we go into anarchy or what? Or do they take total control of us? And that's what they want to do. They want to take control, control of us. 
So that's what the, uh, so the Governor General is only allowed to have 10,000 10, pounds <laughs> and more. <laughs> Unless we're saying it. That's by right, by a referendum. Because you're changing this constitution. So they can't set up their own little group to say, just hold it and I'll answer all your questions later. Or what question? It says, until Parliament otherwise provides, come and vote for change. But, they say that they can change the denomination. It's under pounds. No. Did you did you vote for the change of the currency? No. There's eight points, ladies and gentlemen, which will not come up in this because this document was done in 1900 by Quick and Gallup. I'll tell you a second. Um, not too much. You've got about half an hour until we adjourn. Okay. Let's press on. Eight referendums have been passed throughout the whole of this federation. Only eight have ever been passed. Number one, Senate selection. To enable the election of both houses to be held concurrently. In other words, they were different at the time. So if they can save some money, they'll do it together. So remember, the terms for the House of Representatives is only three years. The Senate is six years. So they split the Senate in half and they come up every three years. Right? So one half will go in one three years the other half will go to the next three years when the next election. So they do them come. Alright, so then the Governor General will, when he removes the uh, Parliament and sits for a new one, he will do the same thing to the Senate, for, the, for that half of the Senate. Alright, number two, state debts. In 1910, they decided to the Federation decided, oh, we'll, we'll pull the states out of, uh, out of their uh, problems. So, it's to give the Commonwealth unrestricted power to take state debts. By the way, the first one was 6 nil at 82.65%. That was the one about the Senate selection. People voted for it and they passed it by 82.65%. And it was 6 states to nil that passed it. The State Act in 1910 to give the Commonwealth unrestricted powers to take state debts. All states agreed except New South Wales, 5 to 1. 54.95% said the Commonwealth can take the debt. Well, it must have been a bit of a problem because in 1914 they decided to have number 3, which passed to end a system of per capita payments which have been made by the Commonwealth to the states since 1910 and to restrict the right of each state to borrow for its own development by subjecting that the borrowing to control by a loan council. In other words, they handed the debts back to the states. Took it off the states. Four years later they handed it back to them. Unbelievable, isn't it? Anyhow, all states agreed to it, and that was 74.33%. Social services was number four that was passed in our Constitution to give the Commonwealth power to legislate on a wide range of social services. All states agreed, 6 nil, 54.39% voted in favour. To enable the Commonwealth, uh, number five, Aboriginals. Okay. To enable the Commonwealth to enact laws for Aboriginal people. To remove the prohibition against counting Aboriginal people in the population counts in the Commonwealth and the States. What that says is that it was time to bring the Aboriginal people under our Constitution. 
And that's what they wanted. Right? Because remember in the early, I don't know if any of you know it, but in the earlier stages of the Commonwealth, we had what was called a white person's paper. In other words, nobody of colour could come into this country. You had to be white. So, this is why it was changed. And that's, this was the thing that eradicated the white paper. <clears throat> and the Aboriginals became part of our system. They are recognised under our system. But unfortunately there are people out there that are saying they're not. Well, I'm sorry. We are one nation, we are one people, and we are, don't matter what colour you are, you are part of this country. You are part of the Commonwealth of Australia. Now what people have to realise, everybody's walking around saying, one nation people, first people here. That is a UN logo garbage to divide the people. That is what they are trying to do. They're trying to divide the people. We recognise the Aboriginal. There was, I'll tell you how many. It was 6 nil the states. And it was 90.77%. The highest recording of a yes vote in this country. And who voted for it? The white people. Because there was no colour people allowed to vote then. 1947. And it was after a case that happened in 1946 and they had to have it clearly done because the courts were trying to say that uh, they weren't part of Australia. So then they had to ask the people of Australia to clarify. They were thinking that the people would have said no. 90.77%. It's never been a higher yes vote in anything, basically, in this country, other than that. We recognise them as the people in this country. They are part of this country. And we need them to be part of this country. They've got to get their heads out of this one nation rubbish because it is a UN thing. They signed a treaty. Another thing I can tell you about, our preamble. Our preamble do not, does not recognise the Aboriginal people. Now there's a reason why they did not put it into the preamble. It's in the Constitution, but it's not in the preamble. The reason being is because certain elders in the Aboriginal community signed treaties with the UN. Now if we had to put them into our preamble, they would have been exactly like us. Gone. Because then, that's why they're pushing hard and hard against the Aboriginal people. They are pushing for them. They're doing it, they're doing it to us, but more so to the Aboriginal people. That's what they're doing. They want to remove them. Because they hold a big claim on this country, other than what we do, because we're in the preamble, they're not. And because they're not in the preamble, they can't touch them. And they can't touch us. That's the reason why they were never put in the preamble. It's a safety net. It's hard to say it under the legal terms, because I'm not a lawyer, but the way I read it is that they are guaranteeing us our still our country because they have not come under the preamble. The UN can't take all the land. They think they own all the land, but as long as the Aboriginal people live in this in this country, they can't take it. That's all. Okay, that was the number five. Number six was uh, Senate casual vacancies. Uh, you know, just a. Uh, when, when the vacancy comes up, they can put in their own party the person that's got become vacant, so that's just to make them happy along there. Uh, 6 nil approved that, 73%. Uh, number seven, referendums, territories. Now this is an interesting one. You really want to know this one. 
If you have a look now, the same government recognises Canberra and the Northern Territory like states. And they said that's because the people of this country agreed upon them becoming part of the state and the federation. No. They did not. What it was to allow all electors in territories as well as in the states to vote in constitutional referendum. Well, why they would put states there because they already vote in constitutional referendums. But they put it there, but territories, they gave them the right to have a say in the referendum. Didn't give them the right to become part of the Federation. It gave them the right to their people to have a vote. That's what they did. Right? So that's all it was, is to vote on referendums. And the last one, to provide the retiring ages for judges of federal courts, which is a good thing. As you can see what's happening over in the Supreme Court over in America, they dropped dead at about 80 or 90 and then they replaced it. So we don't want that to happen here. Alright, so that was good. So they put a time limit on the federal judges. Alright, so that's the eight that are the true parts that's ever been passed in our Constitution. They're not in the book because it happened after 1900. But the fact is they are there. And there was also one other that I've, I've forgotten about. I, I thought I had it there but I must have admitted it. Um, 53, no, 52, 23A was about the uh, force mandate, a uh, force inoculations of people. And we said no to it. Uh, I, I, have, I thought I had it here, but I didn't. Section 51, 23 Alpha? Yeah, 23 Alpha. Yeah, 51. 23 Alpha. Okay. Right, so they're the only ones that were ever passed. Um, Alright, just to finish this off, going to the last section of it. Um, right. So that was the provisions relating to the Governor General before. Okay, the Governor General may appoint such times for holding the sessions of the Parliament as he thinks fit, and may also from time to time, by proclamation or otherwise, prorogue the Parliament and may it in like, in like manner dissolve the House of Representatives. In other words, he dissolves the House of Representatives for an election. That's how he dissolves it. They dissolve it, then you, uh, uh, we the people, we the people are left. At the moment, we don't get a choice. Right? Because they've already been picked, believe it or not. It's called the AEC. The Australian Electoral Commission is as corrupt as what they are over in America. They've been fudging our figures for many, many years. And they've been doing it under our noses. So that's just, that, that's uh, <coughs> sessions of parliament dissolution. All right. Just. After any general election, the parliament shall be summoned to meet not later than 30 days after the day appointed for the return of the writs. In other words, they've got 30 days after it's been put to return the writs and so they've elected new members. Summoning the Parliament. The Parliament shall be summoned to meet not later than six months after the establishment of the Commonwealth. Alright? So, but that goes back now, they have more sessions, but not too many. They don't want to overdo themselves. Uh, the first, and that was the first session in 1901. Uh, number six, there shall be a session of the Parliament once at least in every year. So, that 12 months shall not intervene between the last sitting. 
of the palm and in session, in one session, and it's first sitting in the next session. And that's a, they can't be over 12 months in the next session. But if they don't have too many sessions, they won't be able to sit down and think up their little criminal acts to take more office so they better go there a bit more often. Um, so that's the yearly sessions of the Parliament. Highlights of the Constitution docs. Now this is highlights of the documents of the Constitution. First one, the Act starts with the words, whereas. The proper function of a preamble to explain and recite certain facts which are necessary to be explained and recited before the enactments contained in any Act of Parliament can be understood. A preamble may be used for other reasons to limit the scope of certain expressions or to explain facts or introduce definitions. The preamble has been said to be a good means to find out the intentions of a statute and, as it were, a key to the understanding of it. It usually states or professes to state the general object and meaning of the legislature in passing the measure. Hence it may be legitimately consulted for the purpose of solving an ambiguity or fixing the connotations of words which may possibly have more than one meaning, or determining the scope or limiting the effort of the Act. Whenever the enacting parts are, in any of these respects, open to doubt, but the preamble cannot either restrict or extend the legislative words. When the language is plain and not open to doubt, either as to its meaning or its scope. In other words, it's in plain language. Not when you go to the law school and you'll find A means 27 different words. Okay? It is in plain language. That's what it is. And the preamble explains what the concept of the Constitution is. Next one is the people. Opening words of the preamble proclaim that the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia is founded on the will of the people whom it is designed to unite and govern. Right? The people. I've said it before. It's the people. Not the politicians. They're only elected officials with limited powers. That's all they've got. But they've overdone it themselves. We have a court system that is backing them to get their big dollars. Well, I hear the other day, just to go in and see a case in the Supreme Court, $80,000. It should be paid by us, the people. We pay them the money in there and it should not cost you 80000 to go into a court. You should have the right to go in there and defend what somebody's charging you without paying the money. That's what it should have been. That's what our constitution says. No such thing as $80,000 to go into a court. What's that saying? That's saying you can't go in and defend yourself because you haven't got $80,000. We've got bloody politicians running around saying, oh, if you don't put a mask on, you're going to get a $20,000 fine. Who's got a $20,000 fine because they're not wearing a mask? Where do they think they're going to get the $20,000 from? They're certainly not going to get it out of me because I'm like a rock. Can't get blood out of a stone. <laughs> so, this is why it's we the people. You've got to remember that we are there and we go, not them. Although it proceeds from the people, it is clothed with the form of law by an act of the Imperial Parliament of Great Britain and Ireland. Now, remember I mentioned before, I think I did, I can't recall, did I mention the Versailles documents? 
I did. All right. In 1917, Stanley, nicknamed Billy, like Bobby, Hawk, is Robert. Billy Stanley Hughes went to France and signed the Versailles documents. By him, he was a Labor Prime Minister again, another one of them. By him signing that document, the Versailles documents, he moved us out of the British Parliament and made us a standalone colony. In other words, unbeknown to anybody, except the ones that should have known, was the High Court of this, this country, should have realised that when he signed that document, he had no right to sign it. Because he never asked the people if we wanted to leave the British Parliament. Because the British Parliament was our guarantor to our constitution. They were the ones that were looking after our interests. Right? Now, we've got the High Court because they went and closed their eyes to it all, this corruption that they did. They now tell you, we now look after the constitution for you. Well, don't you think that's a conflict of interest? They determine what the Constitution says, but they will come after the interests of the people. See how corrupt it got to? See where it's all gone? So people don't understand it if they don't understand their Constitution. This is what they've actually done to us. And it's really, really terrible. All right. Uh, so, the British Parliament is, according to Dicey and all other modern jurists, the keystone of the law of the British Constitution. Right? Now we were part of all that. Now we're not. Okay? We were taken away from it. So, the affirmation of the preamble. It will be noticed that the preamble to, the con to this Constitution contains no less than eight separate and distinct affirmations and or declarations. Eight Now these were put in place, these eight affirmations was put in place by Queen Victoria because she knew what the politicians were going to do. She knew it way back in 1900. Remember, she died before the official proclamation in October in 1900. And 1902, 18 months after her death, New South Wales decided to pull out of the Constitution. Followed by Western Australia in 1904. 1921, not only did Queensland go back to their 1867 bloody Constitution, but they also did away with what's in there It says we have two Houses of Parliament. That's what it states. An upper house, a lower house. But we haven't got an upper house here in Queensland. But did they ask the people? No. They went back to their 1867 constitution and said, I will make a decision. And that's what they did. Treason. Traitors. All of them. That's what they are. No other word for them. So that's what they've done. So the eighth that I'll call out is the agreement of the people of Australia. That's one. She put that in. It has to be the agreement of the people of Australia. Must be. Their reliance on the blessing of Almighty God. Once again we go to the crown. Right? This is what they're trying to take out of our system now is take God, Allah. I don't care who you, who you pray to. The fact is you're praying to a God. And that God is the one that stands above and gives us his blessing. And that's what we should be looking at. It doesn't matter what church you go to. It's your belief and the belief in yourself as the people. Um, three, the purpose to unite. What I just said, to unite. Be as one, as the people. Not, I'm a Catholic, but you're a Protestant. You follow Allah. You do. Unite. Unite together as one group. Uh, number four, the 
the character of the union indissoluble remember that's the word of this constitution it is indissoluble they cannot remove this not even the queen can remove this constitution because it's we the people who voted to put it into place she agreed for us to have it now she can't take it away she can't stick the dummy out and walk off or take a bat and ball doesn't matter it is us the people who say yes or no to this constitution it's our constitution not theirs it's the people please understand that more and more I will probably reiterate the fact that it's you are the power of this country you, the people I must be boring you by now but anyhow <laughs> I'll try and finish it uh, the dependence of the union under the crown under the crown all right the government of the union under the constitution the government under the union is the constitution our highest law in this country okay just only a couple of minutes number eight the expediency of the provisions for admission of the other colonies of the state well we haven't had one since then so but they're above eight declaratory parts of the preamble only four there's only four the third the fifth the seventh and the eighth find legislative expression in, in, the, uh, in definable clauses to be found in the body of the act so they are the only ones that can be legislated against those four the rest they can't and that is it so I say thank you ladies and gentlemen for this I might have taken a little bit longer than I said I won't go and talk often again but I hope you learned something out of all this <laughs> okay so running a little bit long on our time right now and I'm going to try and stick to getting us out of here on time so um, look I'm not sure who in the room has taken the time to read through that um, I have uh, but only because I want to be informed by standing up here and talking to you guys. Um, Bernie, thank you very much. We're going um, to continue on some of these sessions, um, breaking down the Constitution into different portions. So tonight, obviously the preamble and the first general parts of it, um, so that we can kind of just get an understanding of how it reads in the very first part, whereas we the people, right? Whereas the people. And that's important for us to know in the very first part. So. Yeah, go ahead, Robert. Okay. What's the remedy and how long will it take? <laughs> what is the remedy and how long will it take? Well, I think the um, first thing is, is the remedy is um, educating people about it. And they've spent 70 years not teaching it in schools right now, so that um, it puts us in this situation we're in right now, right? And nobody's been taught this stuff for, for ages, for decades, many decades. So mm -hmm. that, I believe that that's going to be our remedy. Um, by you guys coming to these meetings and learning this stuff um, and learning the basics of where it came from in the first place, that's going to be our remedy. How long is that going to take? Well, let me ask you guys. How many of you go from these meetings and you share your learnings with someone else? How many of you talk to someone else that's not in your family and say, hey, I learned this at the common law meetings, yeah? Yeah, good. Yeah, that's all right. Let them think that you're not. But you know what? Here's the thing. The only reason they think that is because they weren't taught that. Right? Invite them to come along. Say, look, you guys, we're, we're actually learning some really, really good stuff here. Um, come with me next fortnight. Bring them along. Okay? Every fortnight we have these meetings. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, here. We've actually secured that with the facility so that we're going to continue having them here now. Um, okay, so go ahead, quick. Oh, very good question. So this, all right. 
you can you can download you can get the original one online when you look at it. So it's the Constitution Act of um, it's the UK 1901 version. So the Constitution of Australia Act uh, 1901, and then in parentheses it says UK. And um, so it is originally a UK Act. Um, you can get that even off of their government pages. Uh, but if you do a, a DuckDuckGo search for that, you'll be able to find it. Now this bound copy is the annotated version of it. This was annotated by a couple of the guys who wrote it. Am I correct on that? Yep. So this is very hard to find. Yeah, go ahead. The annotated version is that annotated means that this constitution has certain changes. And the changes to this constitution was to allow Western Australia to come into the Federation. That was where they had to come in before July 1900. And that's why it became an annotated constitution of Australia. Sweet, so there we have it. So um, the point, the, the position we're in right now as an assembly is we're, we're in that, still that learning curve, right? And that curve is very steep for us right now. Um, so the, the faster that we're able to learn this stuff, um, the faster the solution is going to come around, right? But the thing is, is we also have to share this with everyone in this community because you'll notice that we go to these rallies out here and it seems like you see the same faces, right? And people are banging their head against the wall saying, what are we getting out of this? And, you know, what kind of results are we seeing? And some people get frustrated and say, we're not seeing anything because they're not changing their policies. They're, they don't care about us. They don't want to listen to us. They're still trying to enforce these mandates. But I disagree with that. I get it. I get what you're saying, that, and, and that they're still trying to force these jabs on the kids. And they're still trying to make us wear masks. But I'm going to tell you something. I've gone through interactions with the police here. Um, I was arrested, everyone knows that. It was on the damn news. Um, and uh, unlawfully, and I'm, I'm pushing that through the courts now to contest that, and so we'll see where that goes. However, since then, I've also gone out plenty of times without masks because I know who I am, right? I know that I'm lawfully not required to wear a mask. Now, I know a lot of you have also gone out since then not wearing a mask walking right past police officers now. And they don't bat an eye at you anymore. Right? So that's progress. I'll take that. You know, I was the guy who was on the news and they tried to make an example out of me. Um, which, you know what? That, that'll sort itself out later on. But we are making progress that way. Um, I had a question earlier about where, when are we going to get these vax clinic stuff? Or when are we going to get the, the, the get them to stay with the schools? You know, and things like that. Look, it takes, it takes time, but each time we confront the situation and we know in our, in our background knowledge where we lawfully stand with it, then yeah, it gives you more confidence. It gives me more confidence knowing how to talk to the police about it. It gave me a hell of a lot of confidence when the, the day I was arrested to have that conversation with the police and not just be a blubbering idiot and arguing with them and resisting arrest and making it a whole lot worse for myself. I had a very good conversation with the cop who was arresting me at the time. And he knows. He knows. I talked to him all the way through. I talked to him about the Constitution. Burned on down through parliamentary laws, uh, you know, uh, Commonwealth laws and other state laws and all that. And so he knows now. Um, but I have that confidence because I have that knowledge. And that's what you guys are gaining as well, too. There, there's some of you in here who are way more confident than me. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so um, that's, that's where we have to go, okay? We have to keep learning. Um, we have to know what's in that constitution right there. And uh, like I said earlier, I spouted it off when Bernie was at your talking section 51, um, 23 alpha. That was a, um, a lawfully enacted referendum to our constitution. And that's the one that tells us there's no civil conscription for medical or dental procedures, right? So we'll learn about it, we'll get there. Uh, but if you don't know that type of stuff about the Constitution, then you're, you're timid when you have to talk to somebody. You know, when somebody says you gotta wear a mask, no I don't. Yes you do. Well, I don't know the Constitution, but I think it says that I'm not required to. Make sense? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to have to start to wrap things up here. Um, there are a couple of things, Carly, before I jump back over to you. Um, 
there's a couple of interactions that we have had in the community, and I do definitely want to get to that. So, Cal, are you here? Here. Where are you at? Do you mind? Do you want to come up now? Okay. So some of you guys all recognize Calvin. He was in our assembly meeting about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and he had raised some concerns about what, what the, um, his interactions with law enforcement and how they were treating him at his house. Um, so they've come on your property, they've stolen the retro, retro plates off your car. Since then you've had more interactions with them where um, they euthanize your dog, is that right? Okay, that was three years ago, so okay. So, Calvin's been taken into the courts um, recently, um, appealed for our help because um, we we stand by it. Um, he's part of our assembly and he knows um, that his sovereignty is backed by God. Um, that's where he gets, you know, we know that, if you guys haven't caught on to this stuff yet, the laws that we follow in this country, whether they're the new laws, the, um, the legal system, or the lawful system, it all originates with God. And whether you like that or not, it's written in our own constitution. It's, and it, and it, there's no escaping that. So, um, we're good. at some point, we're all going to have to come to that conclusion. <laughs> That's where your sovereignty comes from. Um, anyway, look, real quick, because um, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but we, we had, um, you had some interaction with the courts. And we came to some new understandings about what goes on in the courts, including a corporate logo that's on the walls and how to talk to the judge and things like that, right? Um, just in the background, real quick, Brody, can you pop that um, web page up, uh, the coat of arms, I think it is. Did I tell you that one? I'll come back there and help you. Can you, while I'm going back there real quick, can you talk to us about um, your interaction with the judge and where your case stands real quick? The reason I'm doing this, guys, is because um, it's important that we each share the knowledge that we're gaining from our interactions with people out in the community. I shared my interactions with the police, um, with you guys, so that you kind of have an understanding of what I went through and then where it stands. Same thing goes with you, Calvin, um, and there's some other people in the community as well that, like we talked a little bit about, um, Bernie was um, servants of papers. So the interactions that we had with the police that were there provided to be pretty fairly positive, okay? So there, we're gonna start approaching the police now with Bernie's situation about educating them on the Constitution so that they can start to learn just like we are. And then they understand where we're coming from when we're telling them, hey, hang on, hang on, this is just a mandate, it's not actually law. Anyway, I want you to share a little bit about what you uh, went over with the, with the judge, okay? And I wanna go back and I'll get, um, Brody, you set up with that website, and, and I'll be right back up on stage. I'll be quick as possible because I'd rather get Mr. Rowling up here. He's oh, the man. I've watched him a lot. He's awesome. Um, my path, everyone's path is going to be different. Everyone's path will present itself to you. Your path is your path. This is a fact. Um, when I chose this path, once I found out that they were criminals and they did wrong to me, I chose this path to learn the Constitution, to learn the laws of God, to learn my rights. Um, the hardest thing is controlling your emotions because you're dealing with people that are lying directly to your face. And it is, who's dealt with lies before? How do you get triggered? You get triggered hard, right? Now, when you're talking to the police and they're supposed to be helping you, it is so hard to keep your emotions in check. And this is where I get that from. Um, and even still, I, I go off. Um, so the first time I went in there, I made a mistake and I actually walked through the gates and I approached the bench, which means I approached the bar um, and the judge gave it to me. <laughs> really, I did tell him that he was emotionally compromised and he should, <laughs> he should recuse himself. But um, because I entered into his realm, he had dominion and he treated me however he wanted to. He threatened me with contempt of court. Um, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, mate. So they remanded it without my consent. I said to him, look, you're doing this like a, a Bunnings checkout, mate. You know, I'm not consenting to this, but you can go ahead anyway, whatever. As I'm walking out, I looked at him like, mate, I'll see you in federal court. I will get there. And yes, I do have a federal court account and I'm learning as much as I can because this is wrong. This is for the children. We have failed the women and children. 
big time. We all know the people that are in the government, like the P word, I don't like saying it. But we men, we as men. Like when I found that out, it was for me it was it. It was like, no, I can't consent to these people. If they are willing to let these kind of people run the country, I'm like, no, so I'm learning to defend the women and children of this country and my fellow countrymen under the laws of God. That's what he's going to do. So, what is the Constitution? The Constitution is their boundary that they cannot step out of. They're trapped in it. And we need to acknowledge it. We failed it because we don't acknowledge it, so they've jumped out of it. I got onto uh, uh, the Australian High Court case, 1951. The Australian Communist Party versus the Federal Commonwealth of Australia. Right? When I read that, there's very two valuable precedents that were set by Justice J. Fulliger. The first one is the stream cannot rise higher than its source. The stream is the government and we are the source. The constitution is the source. When they refuse to answer us or answer our request, please show me your oath, which is what I did to the judge. Show me your written oath. I'm a CPO as well. Sworn oath to the federal constitution. So that gives me the right to say, excuse me, sir, can you show me your oath so that we're both on the same page? If we're not on the same page, how can it be law? Right? It's just one person doing his will against somebody that's standing in the law, somebody that's standing as a corporation. The second precedent that this court case sets is the validity of the law cannot rely upon the opinion of the lawmaker. They're the lawmakers, and they're just making shit up willy-nilly, doing whatever they want, excuse my language. Right? They don't care. They don't care. And the scariest thing is you look at the judicial system, compromised. Healthcare system, compromised. Government, compromised. Police, compromised. Absolutely every aspect of our life is compromised. And we need to learn how to uncompromise it. And that's with the federal constitution. So I am enacting my God-given inalienable rights of freedom of travel. They're trying to attack me with that. It's not going to happen. The second time I went in there, I didn't walk through the gates. And I said, I reserve my right to remain where I am. And that gave me actually more access to speak to them. Although they ignored absolutely every single word I said, and they continued on like a Bunnings processing plan, right? <laughs> it didn't matter what I said. They just ignored everything. They don't care. They do not care. And the only way you're going to get to these people, every court is probably compromised and you have to challenge them with the laws of God in their temples. The Federal Court. The Federal Court of Australia. Federal Court, the Federal Constitution. Makes sense, yeah? you got the Supreme Court, you got your local magistrate court, which shouldn't even be there because a single magistrate cannot preside because a single man is not without bias. Right? It's all common sense. It really is. And you've got to simplify it. And so with me, I'm like, no, no, no. You need to show me your rights because I've, I've, um, I'm a CPA. I acknowledge myself as a living, breathing man under the laws of God. And I've sworn the oath to it, now you show me yours. If they refuse to show me their oath, what is that? That's breaking the um, precedent that was set in 1951. The stream cannot rise higher than its source. If they refuse to answer that to me, that's treason. Blatant treason. Subversion. Sedition. You name it. It all rolls out with simple precedents. I don't know how I found this 1951, the Australian Communist Party versus the Federal... I never knew we had a Communist Party in Australia. <laughs> right? Now here's the creepy thing. Is when I read this, you go down and you see there's about that much. There's about that much that defended the Commonwealth of Australia. And mind you, that case has constitutional law that removes communists from this country, but they're not enacting that constitutional law. They're ignoring it. They're ignoring it all. So in that, with that precedent set, they ignore me. I'm totally lost now. <laughs> it's rambled too much. So the second time I've gone in, it's all good. I'm talking to her, blah, blah, blah. I bring up this topic. I'm getting ignored. And she's like, you need to come through. I can't hear you. You need to speak. The microphone. 
And I'm like, oh, that's a trap. So I played the poker and I said, no, thank you. Last time I was in there, I got a bit seasick. I'd rather <laughs> stay here, thanks. Um, I didn't say that. There's, someone, there's people that were there who helped me say that. Oh, no, I'm a cheeky shit. I don't care. They've destroyed my life and taken everything for me, from me, right? When you've got nothing, you've got everything to fight for. So I can do this. A lot of you probably can't because you own houses, you're married, you have children, you've been responsible. I've been an irresponsible sinner all my life. And now I've had a call from God to stand, preach His Word and stand in the laws of God to get these bloody pedophiles out of our government. Are you kidding me? How can the man of Australia let this happen? How can the police let this happen? So that's why I said, sorry guys, I don't consent. You're not doing your job. I didn't pay taxes all my life for you guys to not do your bloody job. None of you did. And absolutely every single one of you have a right, right now, to stop paying rates. Don't pay your registration. Don't pay your licences. And you know what? I will advocate for you in court for nothing. They will bloody hate me. And I will love turning up. Go, excuse me, no, and I'll be like, we can't, no, get him out of here. We don't want it. And I'll be like, ah, you're mine, mother. Eventually, I knew that I would stub my toe, I'd trip and fall. But that's life, right? You learn by your mistakes. Get in there, half at it. What have you got to lose? You're going to lose your bloody country if you don't do nothing. Why don't you do something, right? That's my point. I passed it on to the wrong man. This man is the man. God bless you all. Ideally, none of us want to be in there, right? But my case, in particular, um, I kind of, I kind of want to have it because um, I want. There's a couple of things I'm going to approach it a little bit differently. Uh, but we did learn, though. Um, this is the the state logo that's sitting up above that magistrate's bench. If you want to call it that, right? That's on the wall. That that's the, the symbol or coat of arms of the state of Queensland. Has everybody seen that before, or no? No. So it's the, the stag and the brolga. And Brody has highlighted this portion down here. This is off the Queensland government website. Okay. And if you scroll down, literally just the third little paragraph right there, it says, as of August 2012, the Queensland coat of arms has been used as the government's corporate logo. So right there, they're telling us this is a corporation. And that's their logo that that, that court is operating under. It's on the wall. Just have to understand what you're looking at. All right. So <coughs> we're running a bit over right now, so I'm going to wrap this up because I really do want to um, respect you guys' time and my own time and everyone else, the organizers' times. Okay. So, um, Carleen, there was uh, thank you, thank you, um, Calvin, for bringing uh, your experience up here on stage, sharing it with us. Um, I know there's a lot more in the audience as well, and I planned on having a little bit more time for this, um, but we'll, we'll sort through that in the next meeting, okay? Um, we will be meeting again in, in two weeks' time. Um, the same here, same, same place. The 15th, yep, okay. On the 15th. And um, uh, after the meeting, what I'll request is um, we're going to make sure that we're going to get ourselves cleared from the building within about, well, let's, it's quarter till nine right now, so before nine o'clock, make sure that we're gonna have everyone out of the building, okay? And that way the church can do the cleanup and the things that they need to do to wrap things up in here. Carleen, I'm gonna bring this back over to you real quick. Um, I'm gonna let you have some final words, um, and I'll, before I do that, I'll just let you guys know, for fundraising-wise, if you're still interested and you wanna get any of the flags or the t-shirts, come up and see us. Um, we've got them up here available for you. Other than that, thank you guys, and I'll let Carleen go ahead and close out the meeting. Thank you.